were scared, confused. We need care and love. We are lost. If I could talk, this is what I would say. Why did you abandon my friends? Why did you surrender them? Why did you abuse and neglect them? If I could talk, I would speak for Roger and Jackie and Sally and my other friends who live with me at the shelter. We come from all corners of the county, but we have one thing in common. Our home is at the Manatee County Animal Shelter. And we have just one hope to someday find a forever home with a loving family. We arrive at the shelter for many reasons and live in a place overcrowded by two times what it was built for. We sleep in kennels half the size of what we need. Our problem is very real. It is heartbreaking to see my friends without a real home. If I could talk, I'd ask, why are we homeless and unwanted? Um, so often people adopt and people come in and they see these wonderful dogs and they why is this dog here? and yet it continues to happen. So uh, all I can tell you is a couple people have said um, if their dog is dumb enough to run away, then they're not going to go get them. Sometimes the dog has heartworms and maybe they can't afford to pick them up. Sometimes that people just don't have the resources and they think that, you know, there's no other thing that I can do for this pet. I'm just gonna let it go because somebody will pick it up and, and it's fine. And unfortunately, sometimes those animals get hit by cars and other unfortunate things happen. When one of my friends is found roaming the street, it is often reported to animal services. The first to arrive on the scene is an animal control officer. If I could talk, I'd tell my friends not to be afraid. The officers are there to help them find their way back home. For whatever reason, we found an animal, regardless of it's stray, a bite, a loose, abandoned, whatever it may be. The very first thing, once we impound it in our vehicle, we're gonna look for the county tags, we're gonna look for the, the microchip. Okay, we're going to try whatever we can while we're in the field to return that animal. Say I can't find the rightful owner or the rightful owners aren't home, we're going to post the property and let them know that we have your animal and this is where you can find your animal in a certain time. We bring them here, they get a photograph here. We have a website, you go on our website, you can see anything we take in. If I could talk, I'd tell my friends that the animal shelter will take good care of them. They'll feed them, give them medical attention, and help them find their families. When an animal comes here, um, there's certain stray holds if it's on a stray weight or if it's an owner surrender, it's, it can be available the next day. Uh, stray holds are typically five days for dogs, three days for cats. Um, so the animal will stay here for that period of time. Uh, it will get processed uh, medically um, and then it will be assessed behaviorally. Um, if it is claimed by an owner, then you know we, we are able to give it back to them and find, you know, reunite them. If not, then the animal will be assessed, go up for the adoption. Um, if during that time a rescue comes, they can actually pull that animal and help it relieve some of the overcrowding here and have more cage of space here. The more rescues pull, the, more, the less animals we have, more space we have for other animals. If I could talk, I'd tell the shelter employees and volunteers, thank you for trying to be a no-kill shelter. This shelter itself is an open admission shelter. We are the only one in Manatee County, so we're tasked with bringing in all the strays. So any stray that uh, any animal that comes in our doors, we, ha we are obligated to take. We don't euthanize for space. You would euthanize for um, aggression or extreme medical cases. So what do we do with all these animals? So it's really, you know, trying to figure out what those resources are, you know, asking our other uh, shelters in the community if they would be willing to take some of our animals, making sure we have a good flow of that coming in and out of our facility. If I could talk, I'd tell everyone to adopt us from the shelter because we are really lovable and would appreciate a good family and home. We went through a couple, three, and he come out and he was the one. I just knew it. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> he just got a personality. Yeah. I'm a, a volunteer at Manatee County Animal Services, and we take care of pretty much the same dogs each time we go out to volunteer. We walk them, play with them, try to keep them socialized to people so that they don't just stay in their kennel all day long. It took, well, just the discussion alone to know if we were going to adopt a dog was about a year. And then uh, just 
visiting different places, deciding where we would get the dog from or if we would get a puppy or go to a pet shop or a shelter, all that took a very, very, very long time. It was very tedious and very long, but very worth it. A lot of dogs that are at pet stores are from what we call puppy mills. And puppy mill puppies have not been socialized. They've been born in a cage and they've been shipped across the country. Oftentimes they're not healthy. And so when you adopt from a shelter, you are saving a life, but you're also maybe getting a healthier animal. And I took care of her for about six weeks. When she first came to us, she was very, not timid, but she didn't really interact very well. She'd walk beside you, she'd look at you, she'd look away. But as I had her and took care of her over six weeks, she started coming out of her shell, started getting a little more playful. We were able to add her into the what we call play groups, where we introduce several dogs together in a play yard and let them start to play. And I had been thinking about adopting a third dog because um, I had lost one of my dogs. And it was, I think what happens is you just can't get that dog out of your mind. And so I kept thinking about her, thinking about her, and finally I thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and adopt her and take her home. I'm pretty sure she'll do fine with the boys. And she walked into the house and looked at my biggest dog and the little hearts started floating around her head and she went over and started playing with him and snuggling on him and that was it. So she was the perfect, perfect match for our little family. If you go to a pet store, you're going to pay hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars for a dog. Then you have to take that dog to the vet and you're gonna pay hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars for the medical for that dog. Contrast, you go to a rescue and you might get that dog for free. At the most, you're going to pay a few hundred dollars, but the animal will already have its shots and it'll be spayed and neutered. And those services alone are worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It is really rewarding. It's, it's, a, it's humbling because you don't know his past. So you have to think a little differently about using certain smells or certain words or certain disciplines or certain affections because I don't know what his true nature is yet. And it's been really exciting at the same time because we don't know. <laughs> so we're getting to know him every day. And it's just been a wonderful experience. I, it's, it's exciting. I would recommend it to anyone. If I could talk, I'd ask, if adoption isn't the final solution, then what is? Um, I think it, it's the four E's that I always refer to as education, enabling, encouragement, and enforcement. And if we take those and really let people know that there is a problem, then perhaps they can take the situation and, at least on their part, make a difference. So if everyone takes personal responsibility, we can solve the problem. Educating the community is probably one of the biggest things to help a community. Um, educating on the importance of spay and neuter, educating on the importance of microchipping and licensing your pet, and really starting at a young age, um, getting into the schools, talking to kids, um, making them understand you know, the importance of um, pet overpopulation, what shelters really have to deal with, and that shelters aren't a bad place to go and that people you know, use that as a resource. I've heard people say that dogs are a man's best friend. I believe that's true. If I could talk, I'd ask, why won't you adopt me?